Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and getting good! I know you've probably heard that phrase for over the week, I know I have. As you all know, Elden Ring dropped, and I'm sure there's a lot of you playing this game. Now, when it comes time to the ultimate question, does Dark Souls uh, deserve an easy mode? Does Dark Souls need an easy mode? Does Elden Ring need an easy mode? Does Sekiro need an easy mode? Does Bloodborne need an easy mode? Does your mom need an easy mode? Is a question that constantly gets asked around. Now, I've been reading this one tweet on the internet, and actually Twitter, have been filled with it, Reddits have been filled with it, entire gaming discourse has been filled with this thing. Elden Ring is obviously really popular, to the point where it's like one of the most played games of all time on like Steam. It's a pretty big achievement from From Software, and I congratulate them all heartedly. Elden Ring is a great game, and I've been playing it for a long time. Like, I've been religiously into it. The last time I played a game this hard was Metal Gear Solid 5, was Red Dead Redemption 2, and these are big, big releases. That's a, that's a big thing for me. For me to sit down and put like like 30 hours of my life into a game so close to its release cycle. That's because Elden Ring is addicting. Every death makes you learn something. The world is beautiful. The amount of customizations and builds and things that you can do in the game are absolutely massive. Without a doubt, this is From Software's biggest undertaking, and it absolutely shows. You know, there's Dark Souls, and then there's open, big Dark Souls like Elden Rings. And honestly, if Bloodborne 2 or anything is around the corner, it needs to be in the same vein or scope as Elden Ring to even match the level that From Software has put out. They really outdid themselves. But because it's the most popular game and it's the most accessible ones, I've seen takes like this. I'm so damn tired of the get good discourse. Your experience isn't affected one iota by the presence of difficulty slider. Games are too damn expensive to make them solely for the niche masochistic audience. Now, this is where I beg to differ. Obviously, this is not a niche game, given the fact that so many people have bought this title. The fact that it's a bigger sales week than Call of Duty Vanguard and things like that, Elden Ring is not a niche anymore. From Software titles are not a niche any longer. This is something that's very much becoming the mainstream. Now, to understand, you can look through my discourse and history, and I've probably agreed with takes like, maybe have a difficulty slider. Maybe add an easy mode that literally doesn't change anything but the actual damage output from the enemy. I could understand on that perspective. Now, the reason why I've sort of geared towards that thinking initially was because accessibility modes in video games start to make sense. There's a lot of people that actually have debilitating injuries, disabilities that prevent them from playing certain video games. And of course, there's always going to be modifications and accessibility options that make shit really easy. For instance, Forza has an option that allows you to literally half the game speed so you can react better. And the footage you're seeing over here is Last of Us 2, specifically when I was playing the game with every gameplay accessibility mode enabled. Now, I have some slight visual impairments, and I'm not talking about the actual, like, accessibility features where you add backgrounds to subtitles or you, you know, make some visual, you know, features more apparent. This is where the game can literally allow you to, like, sneak past enemies just by, like, crawling down to the ground to make you completely invisible. This is, like, Chicken Hat Metal Gear Solid 5 territory, and it's a accessibility feature that's a portion of the game. You you can actually use it to play past entire portions if you're not good at the stealth segments or whatnot. So basically it's, I guess in a, in a roundabout way, it's kind of like a gameplay skip, if you will. And tons of games have these kind of features. You know, you lose too much at Grand Theft Auto V, they'll give you an accessibility shortcut pass through, uh, you know, to the next checkpoint or even skip a mission. So this is something that you tend to see as part of games now. And there's a lot of people that tend to use these and there's a lot of people that don't tend to use these. I've never used these accessibility features unironically. I've I've only used them to experiment around, and it hasn't detracted from my experience of a video game whatsoever. Now, when you think about Elden Ring or Dark Souls or anything of that nature, these games typically require fast reactions. The only accessibility mode I can honestly conceive that would make this game easier or more accessible to people is if you added a feature to slow down time, thus allowing you to parry better or dodge easier or whatnot. Now, to understand, this would make the game dramatically easier if you could do that. And I think if this gameplay feature or accessibility feature is what people are asking for mostly, then uh, it's something that I would never enable. But if somebody who had some physical impairments or somebody that wasn't quick at reacting for whatever medical reason or just any reason in general, this would be a feature they could enable for themselves. I don't think I'd be against that at all. I don't really see a reason to be against that, period, if there's an option setting just buried in an accessibility toggle for that person. It's not something you have to enable. There's a lot of features in Elden Ring that make the game easier that you don't have to partake in. A lot of people can self-impose difficulty on themselves within this game, and it's something we're going to be getting to 
in a bit, but first let's cover difficulty sliders in video games and specifically in Elden Ring's case if they were to be included. Now when it comes to Elden Ring or Dark Souls and the idea of difficulty sliders, I want to talk about difficulty sliders in general and why they're fucking bullshit. So for instance, the one example that I'm going to use right now that's really strong is Assassin's Creed. Now, I'm not talking about the good Assassin's Creed stuff from Assassin's Creed 2 in that era. I'm talking about the recent titles like Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. Now, to be real with you, I do enjoy these games. They're kind of like turn your brain off and play an Assassin's Creed title. But when it comes to their difficulty, they're very much RPGs that are focused heavily on difficulty sliders, and the difficulty slider is very skin deep. Now, when I think of difficulty sliders like easy, medium, and hard, I think of difficulty in the sense that the AI changes. Things like resources in an open world game become more abundant the easier the difficulty curve becomes. In a lot of cases, what developers choose to do is when they implement a difficulty slider, they literally just change the damage output and the damage received values. So your character takes a lot more damage, but all of a sudden, one arrow shot to the head on medium difficulty becomes 10 arrow shots to the head on hard difficulty. There's no reason this should happen. Just because you set something to hard difficulty doesn't mean that their brains, their heads, develop ballistic resistance out of nowhere. It's literally just a damage modifier that changes the difficulty in a very skin-deep fashion. Now, a good example is Far Cry 5. I mean, let's be real, every Ubisoft game is the same. On their difficulty sliders, they literally give you easy, medium, and hard. The only difference is damage output, and that's pretty much the only gameplay change you'll get. It's not as if making the game on harder difficulty is going to change anything. Literally, it's just damage output values. These might as well be accessibility sliders at this point, because nothing changes in the gameplay department whatsoever, aside from arbitrary damage falloff numbers and whatnot. It's not as if changing easy, medium, or hard suddenly makes the AI much more tanky. Sorry, it doesn't make the AI much more lethal or actually incorporative of using new different moves. So when I think of difficulty sliders in games like Elden Ring, it really makes me question how effective they can be. If you want the game to be easier in the sense that you take less damage and the enemies take more damage, the games already have an easy mode. It's called leveling up and grinding. But I want to get to that in a little bit. I want to talk about getting good in a video game and talking about accessibility. There's going to be easy games and there's going to be really difficult games. I wouldn't even say From Software makes difficult games. They make challenging titles that require you to refocus and think. I think the biggest problem with Elden Ring right now is a lot of people who are jumping into the game basically are treating it with a very Souls-like mentality, very Dark Souls-esque mentality. Basically, they're looking at the game in an incredibly linear scope. They start the game off, they go through the Cave of Knowledge tutorial, they enter in the open world, they get their ass kicked by the knight in the beginning, and they follow through a few of the bonfires, and they follow the arrows that immediately take them to market. Now, Margit destroys a lot of new players. I want to say that Margit is a very difficult boss to start off with, and it's this boss that tells you and basically slowly teaches you that in order to experience Elden Ring, you have to experience the rest of the world around. You have to fight maybe six or seven sub-bosses before you can even take on Margit with the extra levels that you gain. See, if you just jump ahead to Margit right in the beginning of the game, you're going to get your ass kicked. In fact, if you challenge any of the legacy bosses without really exploring the open world, you're gonna have a bad time. The game's going to be handing your ass over. But let's talk about gameplay, okay? Now, in this case, Elden Ring and the Souls game rely on basically very similar gameplay, okay? It's very heavily towards, you know, figuring out timing, figuring out, you know, patterns of enemy attacks. When you go up to a boss, you're probably going to die the first time. Unless you're so tanky that you can actually deliver so much damage to a boss that you can win immediately on your first try. Chances are, these bosses are going to kick your ass. So, really, you're going to have to die once, twice, three, four, five, ten times before before you figure out there are four or five patterns that the boss uses to attack you. Now, if I can figure out how to abuse, how to survive each of these attacks, and then figure out the exact timing that I have to attack the enemy in between and basically whittle their health down with severe patience, I can win. A couple nights ago, I was streaming some Elden Ring, and I got to this fire giant in the uh, sort of later, ha later chunk of the title, later chunk of the game. Now, I was getting my ass handed to me by this character, and a lot of those deaths were entirely on me. I didn't figure out the proper patterns, I didn't know, uh, you know, exactly what the best effective strategy to fight this monster was, and really it took me a few tries before I realized, okay, this is an effective strategy to not cheese the fight, but to battle effectively, 
and I realized just exactly what I had to do to negate as much damage as I can to survive, okay? It really was a, cha a game of patience, and that's most of the bosses in the game. Now, I haven't finished Elden Ring, I'm basically at the last couple bosses, and they have been kicking my ass. But of course, it's going to take me a while so I can really figure the game out, really find out, hey, okay, rethink my brain, take this boss on again, use patience, and win ultimately. Now, when you talk about gameplay difficulty, it's not as if a difficulty slider in these games uh, would even matter if it was just changing damage values. Really, if you were to implement a difficulty slider in these games, you would have to basically make it so that if you were to fight a boss and set the game to easy mode, then the boss would only have two out of their four, you know, attack patterns in the repertoire versus if you go to normal difficulty or even a harder mode then the boss would be like from software intended basically you're forcing from to nerf their game design their artistic vision to make the game easier for everyone to play and here's a reality not every game is built for everyone okay not every game is meant to be played by everyone there are games that require a certain decent level of skill for instance let's go you know take the gears off and go somewhere else Gran Turismo 7 just dropped. Now, Gran Turismo 7 is a, it's not an arcade game. It's a simulating driving game, okay? Meaning that you sit down and you drive the game, all right? You drive cars as if it was reality. Now, there are a couple assists in the game that allow newer players to enter the title, but you're going to eventually have to learn that you cannot play Gran Turismo like you play Need for Speed. You have to learn when to brake the vehicle, when to shift right, when to accelerate, when to, when to corner effectively. You have to figure that you have to learn how to drive in order to master this game, and that's to succeed at it. There are games like Elite Dangerous, which is a space flight simulator that basically forces you to learn Darwinian physics and how to fly a plane, uh, you know, in, 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 in space, all right? It's not like No Man's Sky where you can point and, like, hold the accelerator. No, this is a game where you very much have to learn how to fly a ship effectively. And that can go for Microsoft Flight Simulator and a lot of these other titles. Now, don't get me wrong, those games do have assists. But what I'm trying to get at is there are games, there are certain genres that have, you know, in like, there are certain genres that have certain styles of play that, frankly, are there since their beginning, since their inception. And for Souls games, their challenging difficulty, their challenging but fair difficulty, is basically what has made a Souls game a Souls game. When we're talking about easy modes in these titles, I almost feel like a lot of people that are making these complaints have not looked far enough into Elden Ring. You know, this is probably the most accessibly easy game that you can make. Now, I think the hardest from game is probably Sekiro, because you can't cheese that. You can't level up. You have to basically learn the combat effectively in the game in order to survive. But if you look at Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, these games come with leveling systems. They are RPGs. The entire point of it is, let's say at level 30, if you're getting your ass kicked by Margit, then you can grind, fight other enemies, explore the open world, and by the time you're level 50, 55, Margit becomes a joke. And that that's the same thing that could be said for any battle. I think what people have not realized is this game allows you to find multiple weapons, uh, and basically fit them for multiple classes, upgrade them to their final zenith, and basically have them be absolute damage dealers when it comes to certain fights. There are certain builds in Elden Ring that are absolutely effective against certain types of enemies. For a lot of people, using magic is effectively uh, the easy mode in the game. It's the way for you to really figure out how to use the tools given to you to make the game easier. For instance, there are a lot of summons in the game. One of them is Mimic Tear. Now, I found this one soul, this one summon, through an optional boss fight in the game. When I got the summon, I leveled it up to plus 10, basically reinforcing the summon, and effectively, I created a clone of my primary character. Meaning that if I go up against certain bosses, like bosses that have two and one, basically two versus one, I can summon another, another version of me and make it a two-on-two -two fight that's a little bit more fair. Now, I could bash my head against the same fights and constantly, constantly lose. But something that's really the, the mentality you have to learn about these titles is if you're going to play these games, you have to learn to abuse what's given to you. Now, a lot of the challenge that you see in Elden Ring or Demon Souls or Dark Souls or Bloodborne are a lot of self-imposed challenges. These games come with tons of features, especially Elden Ring. Things like summons, things like spirits, things like... You, overpowered weapons, overpowered armor sets, the ability for you to grind effectively in Elden Ring. This game has one of the easiest grinding spots you could ever find. One that could push any person from level 1 all the way up to level 100 in a matter of nothing at all. 
And it's through this grinding that it becomes one path, one avenue to make the game super easy. Of course, this game provides you numerous versions of those options. And I think it's something that makes Elden Ring a little bit different than previous From games. It's a way for, you know, From to have their cake and eat it too. A lot of people that are huge Souls fans like me have realized that Elden Ring allows us to enjoy the game as if it was a proper Flesh and Blood Souls title. But there's just enough ways for you to cheese, ways for you to not really abuse, but use the mechanics that From has given to you, which are magnitudes larger than previous titles, and make the game easier in your specific playthrough. And I think all of that stuff is valid. I know that there's a community of Souls players out there that absolutely discount certain people who summon or people who use overpowered sets, and for a lot of those people, tell them to touch fucking grass, because the reality is, these games do have easy modes. They have ways for you to assist the entire playthrough for you built and coded right into the game's mechanics itself. And I think that's something people have to learn. I think overall, one of the things that really just kind of gets to me in this entire situation is I understand wanting to have a game be a little more accessible, but when you're talking about making a game that's historically known for being challenging from a developer that makes challenging titles and all of a sudden telling them to create an arbitrary easy mode that literally just changes the entire structure of a game, changes the entire flow of a game, a game that's also connected to a multiplayer component with tons of people coming around and joining this challenge together, I think that's a little bit out there to ask for. I think when you tell them to put an easy mode into something like Elden Ring, it's almost like telling somebody who's making a simulator racing game to all of a sudden add the most easy assist, make the game as easy to play as, you know, Mario Kart or, or, or Need for Speed, if you will, right? Like there are certain genres for certain types of players. And I think Elden Ring is pretty much the perfect game in its genre to appeal to the new players and also basically give a proper Souls-like game to old veterans indeed. I think at the end of this, when I really want to put my piece in, I started as somebody that orbited the Souls franchises, and I, I looked at these games as incredibly challenging titles, and I got my ass kicked the first few times into it, for sure. These games require new players to adapt and, and learn its systems before they can actually succeed. Every death comes with a learning, you know, co co com comes with a chance to learn what you did wrong. And that's really what I had to do, and I think a lot of people that really find the charm in these titles end up figuring out. So yeah, I really wanted to just talk about the get good debate really because this game is really popular and it's hit the mainstream. People I know in reality that would never have touched a Souls game are finally trying Elden Ring out. And for a lot of these people, it's a confusing title. It's a difficult, challenging game. But for those who are willing to put themselves through that ringer and, you know, adapt and learn, they're finding themselves to come to a rewarding experience. Now, I want to ask you all in the comment section below, do you think Elden Ring could benefit with an easy mode? I, I really do want to talk about this debate. I really do want to actually discuss this with people. Again, this is just my thoughts on it. Uh, again, I'm very willing to take an L on the situation. I understand that there's a strong community of people who want there to be a dedicated easy mode in these titles. But I just think it goes against the overall ethos, not even just the artistic vision of the title. I think it's just... This is a genre of titles that's meant to be challenging, and I think implementing an arbitrary mode like this basically takes away the entire point of the title, if you will. Because it's not like anybody's playing this shit for the storyline, it's basically non-existent. I don't know what George R. R. Martin was doing the entire time, but plucking his asshole. So, realistically, if you want the gameplay to be neutered, what is really the point at the end of the day? Let me know in the comment section below. This is me, Mudaharm, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.